Liberty Nation with Tim Donner. So the last vestige of a safety net is now gone, and the Democratic Party has its presidential nominee, apparently. With Bernie Sanders meekly bowing out, it looks like a field that contained 29 candidates and proudly boasted of its diversity, with half a dozen women, four blacks, two Jews, a Hispanic, an Asian, a gay man, socialists, quasi-socialists, social justice warriors, climate change activists... It's now produced a presumed nominee who is none of those things, but instead an old white guy who's been a professional politician for half a century and is now clearly neurologically challenged. Joining us to try and figure out how Joe Biden figures to beat Donald Trump is LibertyNation.com political columnist Joe Schaefer. Welcome back, Joe. Hello, Tim. Thanks for having me. Well, my pleasure, as always, it's been a while and the world is quite different than the last time we spoke. But Joe, uh, Joe Biden is leading in almost all the polls in a head to head matchup with President Trump. The RCP average has Biden leading by between five and six points on average. Should Trump be alarmed? And how much do these poll results mean, given that we're six and a half months out from the election and in the middle of a crisis, which could end any of a hundred ways? Uh, yeah, no, I don't think Trump should be alarmed at all. Um, we all learned the value of polls in 2016 anyway, but that's another story. Uh, Biden was going to get a bump once the party coalesced around him. He's the presumptive nominee. You get a boost from that. And then the coronavirus just up, upending everything in American society. I think it's protected him. Yes, I know he's doing his live streams and freezing up and all kinds of disasters. But he, it's much worse when he's in front of thousands of people doing that. So, Joe, I wrote after Super Tuesday more than five weeks ago uh, that Bernie Sanders should not have quit the race, if only because this virus crisis could entirely change the political landscape. But Bernie went quietly into the night. Did Bernie fail by losing the last two primary fights? Or did he win by moving the party so far in the socialist direction that Biden has now embraced many of Bernie's socialist policies? Well, I think Bernie was right to quit because Bernie didn't want to fight. I think that was clear. Uh, there was something wrong all along. We talked about this months ago. Uh, the energy that he had in 2016 wasn't there. He often seemed to be going through the motions. He, he didn't have that spark he had when he was taking on Hillary in the establishment. And he didn't put up a fight at all when the Democratic establishment went after him and coalesced around this completely historically awful candidate in Joe Biden. So having said that, uh, I don't see how you can call him the winner here. Uh, you know, to say that they're embracing his policies, Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden are, are going to be the Democratic nominee in the two races where Bernie was running for president. Uh, you can't get two more status government unit party figures than that. Yes, the party is more progressive, it's more liberal, but I don't think it's because of Bernie. Okay, Joe, but on the other hand, at the end of all this, Bernie Sanders has moved the party so far to the left that Joe Biden, of all people, is embracing significant parts of the Green New Deal, for heaven's sake, which wasn't even on the table four years ago and is, is the ultimate radical socialist solution. So, I mean, in that sense, seeing that Bernie apparently wasn't really interested in being president, if he wasn't, he was running to affect policy then, and he certainly has done that. Well, he's gotten a career swamp establishment politician, as you said in your excellent introduction, to start mouthing the phrases that his supporters like. Is that really winning or is that just getting someone to say the things that you want him to say with really no hope that they're going to abs actually implement those policies once they get in office? Right. Joe so they get, the, they get the downside. Of, of embracing policies that scare the bejesus out of the American people. But the upside is what? 
<laughs> if they're not going to implement, they're not going to be implemented. You don't get the upside. And the downside is it's going to scare off voters. No, that's a good way of saying that. And isn't that a absolute condemnation of Bernie Sanders as a candidate? I mean, that is the ultimate failure. He's made it harder for his party to win. And even if the candidate who was nominated does win, he's not going to get what he says he wants. Well, you made one mistake in your answer. You said his party, and therein lies the problem. Uh, it's not uh, his party, and I don't think he cares about the Democratic Party. In fact, I think he despises the Democratic Party, and I think they despise him because he wants to run for their nomination without becoming a member of the party. I'd be insulted if I was a party leader, wouldn't you? Well, well it would be nice if he'd stop endorsing these people, then, wouldn't you think? Well, that's true. Good point. But I guess, you know, Eugene Debs isn't running uh, Joe, so he's got to endorse somebody, I guess. Now, it does seem, Joe, it just seems like the closer we get to the Democratic convention, more and more Democrats are going to get cold feet over Joe Biden uh, for obvious reasons. Do you think there's any realistic chance at this point that the party could panic and turn to Hillary again or Michelle Obama or someone, anyone else? I think a lot of that depends on what we see from Biden in the coming weeks. Uh, like I said, I think the coronavirus is protecting him from his worst um, possible um, uh, outburst in public. But yeah, if he deteriorates, if he keeps making these gaffes, if he keeps being really an untenable candidate, I think they're going to have no choice. Um, I wrote months ago that they should just just throw in the towel and go full Oprah and take someone like Michelle Obama, someone who's got that star appeal. I, I think Hillary's a no-go. Even at this late a date, Hillary's a no-go. They, they can't feel like she's going to step out in it and win. Someone like Michelle Obama would be a complete wild card. She'd have that star power that Democrats seem to enjoy. They're looking for a messiah. They're constantly looking for a savior. So that would be an option. But a lot of this is going to be how bad will Joe Biden get in the next few weeks? A lot of us are expecting him to deteriorate. It just it depends on how, how much, how bad it's going to be. Joe. Thanks for joining us. We'll have you back on early and often as we approach the November election, which, lest we forget, is still going to happen, virus or not. Hi, thanks a lot, Tim. Joe Schaefer, political columnist for LibertyNation.com. Quick break, and then we'll be back to try and answer the question, why are markets rallying in the wake of 22 million unemployed? <laughs> 